everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with Jay Cooper Travels. And today I am super excited because we're taking another road trip. Today we're taking a road trip to Sierra Madre in California. And I will we're going to be talking to the mayor in just a second. But for those that are new to my podcast, I just want to let you know a little bit more about Jay Cooper Travels. Um, it's n- about travel around the world as well as um, here in the United States, but it's also about stories. It's about how we travel in life, both personally as well as in careers and um, in our everyday experiences. So I will have on a variety of individuals that we will be interviewing um, over the course of the year. Definitely subscribe and like so that way you can stay um, on the podcast and learn more about who's being interviewed next. Um, so today we are talking about Sierra Madra and um, thank you so much, Mayor, for being here. I really appreciate your being here. I'm super excited to share with everyone what you've been sharing off the re- record with me. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today, Jackie. I'm ex- always excited to talk about Sierra Madre and it's been a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about your background, how you actually um, decided to serve and uh, become a mayor, because I, I love it when I see women involved in politics, especially strong women who have um, varied interests. Um, tell us a little bit more about your story. Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, I I know a lot of elected officials that they knew from day one, this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to go into public service. I was not one of those people. (laughs) My background comes from service in the community. I'm actually a registered dietitian and I became the director of a nonprofit organization. And the work we do there is really about giving back to the community and providing services in low income disadvantaged areas. And you know that's just where the inspiration and the passion came from. And um, as I saw my career through professional work, I found myself in the city of Sierra Madre. And um, when my husband and I were looking for a place to settle down, I said, there's three things that I want. One, I want a bagel shop that I can walk to um, on a Sunday morning. And, and I have to say, we don't have a bagel shop, but we have many coffee shops. Um, Two, I want a place where people still said hello to each other, and they do that here. And the third was, if I have to walk my dog at 1030 at night, I can do that and feel safe. And so when we found ourselves in the city of Sierra Madre, I wanted to get involved because that's in my blood. And um, I saw that there was an opening for a commissioner for the Community Services Commission, which was a perfect match. Um, I was there for five years. And... uh, when city council, uh, there was an opening there, I said, I, I, this is what I want to do. I want to keep the city the same way that I found it. And I ran for office. I think that's, that is super exciting. I, those are things that I wasn't aware of with your background and um, very inspirational. I definitely believe in community service and I believe in giving back. So um And I also love what you shared about the community, um, you know, about the the nature of the um, the city. And it's very special. I mean, the fact that you can feel safe walking, that's wonderful. Um, Tell us a little bit more about the the city. I know that um, we talked about its size and its intimacy. Um, Tell us a little bit more about uh, what makes it special. Sure. Uh, Sierra Madre was actually incorporated in 1907, and um, it's a very small town, and it continues to be. We only have a population of 11,000 people. Um, in, in terms of demographics, uh, we it's probably about 80-85% Caucasian, and I am the first person of color to be elected to the city council, and uh, the first woman of color to be elected to the city council. And um, this, this city really embraced me when I came here. But it's a town where we don't even have traffic lights. And in, if you imagine Los Angeles County and you think of the urbanization of it and the, how condensed it is, um, this is a town where you don't have that. And, and we, we love that. And, and I think there's one thing that all of us commit to on city councils, we're not going to put a traffic light here. 
but we don't even have a major grocery store. We have Mr. Taylor that's been here for over 50 years. It's a place you can still go into and Mr. Taylor knows about the pot roast you ordered last week and he asks you how it was and will help you improve it to make sure it's done to perfection. And um, it, it's a city where community service, and I know you've heard me say that already two or three times, but it's so important here. In 2007, we were an all-American city because of all the, the community activities that we have here. Um, we have uh, one of the seven horticultural wonders of the world. We have a wisteria vine that is um, the largest blossoming plant uh, or wisteria. And what's interesting about that is it, it uh, was first planted in 1894 it's with 75 cents pot. And um, today people come from all over the world to come see it. But it is sitting on the backyard of two homes and it's only open one time a year. And so we always pray for the best blossoms. But uh, again, we, we shuttle people up to the vine. Um, we have a big festival in honor of it and, and to also uh, celebrate our artists um, in, in our city. But uh, we're really excited about our wisteria vine. So everything here is purple and, and wisteria. Um, but those are some really exciting things about our city. We also have the second oldest uh, track, I'm sorry, trail race in, in the state of California. It's called Mount Wilson Trail Race. And unfortunately this year, because of the pandemic, I should say in 2020, we didn't have it. Uh, but we consistently have that every year. And that's another race that people sign up from all over the state. And we've had people from all over the country come to that trail race because of its historic nature. When is the trail race normally? That one's normally in May. And then uh, the wisteria vine is typically in March. In March. Okay. So um, do you do things virtually if by chance we are not moving around in March? I think we will this year, but I, I, I know folks in town are still keeping their fingers crossed for it, but um, I, I, it will be done, I think, virtually this year. And hopefully next year we'll be able to open it up to the public as we have done for uh, the, the last hundred years or so. So I know your town, your city rather is small. Mm -hmm. um, how would someone, if they wanted to take a road trip to you, find you? Um, you know, uh, I know you have some names, um, some larger name cities around you. How would they find you? Uh, typically folks know where Pasadena is. Pasadena is where the Rose Bowl happens every year and the Rose Bowl, uh, Bowl Parade. Um, so we are, we are right adjacent to um, Pasadena and we are also very close to Santa Anita racetracks. People know that very well. And um, we have a lot of visitors there that is less than three miles away from my house. But again, we're uh, 60 miles away from Los Angeles. We also have a gold line that is relatively close by, which is our, our local uh, train here. And uh, folks can come to Sierra Madre via our gold line. So um, I know that we talked about um, the fact that you have a small location in terms of population. Mm -hmm. um, schools, how are they? And houses, um, tell, tell, tell me a little bit more about the feel because we talked about how the, um, if you were to walk down the streets there, everything is a little bit different. It sort of is caught in time. Yes. Um, so starting with the school district, you know, our, our school district, our, our public school district, we actually feed from the Pasadena Unified School District. And it's actually um, the, the middle school and our elementary school are places that people really want their children in. And, and people even debate, you know, do we want to go private or do we want a Sierra Madre public school? Um, we have a, a math academy at our middle school that is, is really the envy of so many districts. They're doing college level math and, and get their, the children and students really prepared, um, not just for high school, but also for college. Um, our middle school has um, and a Chinese immersion program that people love and a violin program that, that's part of the second and third grade uh, uh, classes there. And so they are schools, again, I think that are, are very well respected, um, not just in our city, but really in our region. Um, as, as far as the homes here, um, it, it, the 
the uh, inventory is actually very low and it's, it's very difficult to get in here. And I, I will say that uh, we're very thankful that we're able to get in at the time that we did. Um, but uh, price-wise, the, the price point in the average and median house uh, here is, is, I believe it was 800 to a million dollars, um, 800,000 to a million. But the, the feel of them is it's 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 such a beautiful, unique, charming place where you might have a huge mansion next to you, and then um, a couple houses over have a cute little small craftsman, and um, the preservation of our community and the historic preservation is extremely important to the city of Sierra Madre. Um, I, I, I refer to it as a mansion, but um, we actually went this, through this whole anti-McMansionization and we did not want the extra large homes that was just overwhelming. And we wanted to fit in in a way that um, added to the charm of our city. And so um, again, we, we are very small and I'm sure that is also that also attributes to um, where median house in household, or I should say house prices uh, comes in, but um, you will never see really two houses that look alike in the city of Sierra Madre. And that also, uh, we were talking before, that probably also contributes to why um, a lot of films were made there because of the uniqueness of the, uh, the community. Do you wanna talk more about um, that whole? Sure, we have to. Um, back in the 19, early 1900s, we, we had a, a trolley that came through town and it's in our downtown, um, or what we lovingly call our Kirsten Court. And the, the look and feel of Kirsten Court is, is if you're coming out of, uh, you know, you're coming into a Rockwell um, painting and it's, it's set in a time that is not like you're used to seeing in any urban city. And um, it becomes a backdrop of many TV shows and many movies. Um, and every now and then uh, in, in some of our social media groups, someone will, will put up a list of all of the shows that would have been filmed here. And I get really excited and I try to watch them. But uh, more recently it was uh, Big, Little, uh, Big Little Liars, I believe is, uh, was filmed here. And, and people would kind of uh, stalk outside of the downtown area so they can catch pictures of uh, Meryl Streep and Reese Witherspoon, but it, it really is a unique place. So um, what, your, what are your hopes for the future for your city? So, you know, in our city, uh, because again, we're so small, uh, financially and budget-wise, we have actually been very diligent in, in ensuring that we maintain a balanced budget. And uh, it's not very sexy and not very exciting, but uh, the fiduciary responsibility part is a, a very important because we also support our own police department and our very own fire department. Um, once upon a time, our fire department was all volunteer. So you had, you know, Uncle Joe next door that you'd go knock on his door to make sure he came down. And the fact that we professionalized it and again, have a full-time paid fire department and police department is something that we don't want to lose. We don't want to contract with the county and the sheriffs. It's something that we want to keep here. Um, and, and the other things is, is really that feel for it. If, if you read anything about Sierra Madre, people talk about its unique charm and, and, and the village and the foothills. Um, and we don't want to get lost in, in the, the the 2020 of the, or 2021 of, of big cities. We wanna keep that same feel here. So the financial piece, um, and again, the charm of it and the, the community building part of it is, is still always gonna be important here. I mean, I still take out my trash and I'll have people that are just chatting with me about city issues, but it's because we know each other and we feel comfortable um, speaking to each other. Um, during this pandemic, we um, launched something called Sierra Madre Thrives. And it was just a community members that came together and said, how do we help our businesses and how do we help those that are in need? And we did it as just a, as a group of people that cared about our community. And so every Wednesday, and we just launched it again this last Wednesday, um, every Wednesday we asked people, we're gonna support this restaurant. Um, order from it. Um, the mayor is out there, the chief of police is out there, chief of um, uh, the uh, fire department is out there, and we're handing out the food. And all of those contributions either go directly to that restaurant who has not been able to keep their revenue stream as high as it used to be pre-pandemic, and also those people that are in need, that just might need a meal for that evening. Yeah, no, that's great. That, that you know, again, 
we're all about community and connection. And that's why I created the podcast as well, to let people know about places to visit, places to support, um, because um, we are very interconnected, um, you know, both locally as well as globally. Um, hiking, uh, outdoor life. I know that, um, you know, we've talked about a lot, but um, for people that want to visit and enjoy, what's around you? Uh, so we have two major trails. Um, one is the Mount Wilson. Uh, that's the same trail that uh, we have the, the race on. And that goes up to, uh, we, you can go all the way, you can actually go along the entire San Gabriel Mountains, but uh, I think that takes something like 12 hours. <laughs> Um, but that's a very popular hiking place. And then we also have what we call Bailey Canyon. Um, but, you know, outdoor living is, is part of our everyday life here. In, in Southern California, we are very blessed to have pretty good weather all year round. And that outdoor aspect to it is extremely important. Yeah, no, um, you were talking about some winds that were happening right now. What, uh, what's going on weather-wise right now that's a little bit different than normal? I actually kind of looked around as we were talking to see if you could hear some of those uh, winds. It's it's called the Santa Ana winds, and uh, we only get them uh, maybe once a year, maybe maybe every other year. But it has taken it's taken our white picket fence away. It's taken trees away. Oh my gosh! It's something you don't think happens in Southern California, but. Uh, they are here today. <laughs> well, I really have um, enjoyed speaking with you. For those that ha are new to podcasts, um, there's always a block of information below uh, the podcast and the YouTube. So that way there'll be links. Um, so that way you can go visit um, and take a road trip. Um, any other last minute thoughts that you wanna share with the listeners and individuals who are watching on the YouTube channel? You know, I, I just am really thankful that you gave me the opportunity to speak about a, our city. Um, sometimes folks in town are like, don't tell people too much about Sierra Madre. We don't want them to know. They like keeping it a secret. But there's so many beautiful things about our town. So um, if any of the listeners come out and visit, please give me a, a ping. I would love to say hello. And uh, that's how personable we are here. And I'd love to take you around. One last, one last thought and one last question. Um, are there any special causes um, that you would like the listeners to know? So that way, if there's something that uh, you're trying to support and fundraise for in your local area, that if they, if it resonates with them, they can also kind of reach out and help you out as well. Sure, thank you for that opportunity. What, what is the Sierra Madre Thrives? And I spoke a bit about that and that's really focused on helping the local restaurants and our businesses. And we've had to get really creative, especially for some of our retail stores is how to support them. But if you get onto Sierra Madre Thrives, if you Google that, you can look that up and you can click on to see how you can support there. Uh, the other thing we have in town is, is Megan Maluli. She is this young lady who we just, um, recognized as one of our citizens of the year. She just, she's a recent graduate from college and she just heard a calling uh, during this pandemic. And so really families that were in need, she just said, how do we help them? Most recently we had a, um, an apartment fire and uh, three people lost their homes. And so she just found, how do we find a bed? One had a, a one month old, eight month old baby. How do we find a crib? How do we find some um, clothing? So her um, organization is called Sierra Madre Gives Back. She had to change it because Helping Hands was already taken. So that's a new um, name, but um, she's always looking for donations of clothing, of food, of anything that people can provide to help families. And I'll make sure that those links are also in the podcast uh, block below. Definitely subscribe, like, um, listen, enjoy. Um, the road trips uh, for Jay Cooper Travels are going to be continuing throughout this year. And uh, Mayor, thank you so much for being on. I truly appreciate your time. I know we're going to have other conversations because of um, other topics that we both have interest in. So you might be hearing um, a familiar voice um, on Wellness <laughs> Wednesday or on a, my Career Day podcast. 
again, um, like and subscribe. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jackie.